Well, today it's Friday and it is an absolute scorcher. I've got the Fact 50 on because I'm gonna be heading to play golf with my friend Neil. It's uh, been a minute since I've got out on the course. We've had some pretty horrific weather in the UK, just like classic British rainy weather. So um, we've decided to make the most of the opportunity and get out on the course. I know recently I was talking about going to play at Wentworth. Unfortunately, we had to Sorry, we've got some guys doing some work here today and Paul to, likes to let them know who's boss. <laughs> but um, yeah, I recently spoke about going to Wentworth. That unfortunately got postponed because of the weather. Um, so we're just trying to work on a few new dates for that, but that's still gonna happen and I am really looking forward to it. But it just means that I've got a little bit more time to tidy up my game and uh, hopefully uh, get my handicap down ahead of that day because it would be really lovely to have a good game of golf, like not putting too much pressure on myself or anything, but it would be nice to play well uh, at Wentworth because it's a course I've always wanted to play on. What else is happening today? I'm actually gonna be heading into Bista to have some work done on my face. It's something that I've wanted to have done for quite a long time now. I've spoke about it before on my channel, I believe. The guys there said that it's something that they'd be able to help with. So we're gonna go and find out and uh, see what they can do for me. So my appointment's there this evening at 5 p.m., which means that I'm gonna be very sweaty after walking 18 holes in the late 20 degree heat of today, but that's not my problem. I've got some deodorant and hopefully they'll be wearing masks. So they won't have to smell me, uh, but I just wanted to get it done. So yeah, that's uh, the plan of action. And then I'm gonna get back because it is such a gorgeous evening. I'm hopefully gonna be able to uh, enjoy the sunset in the garden. I think this evening Lydia's gonna be heading out for a cheese and wine evening with Carrie, a little girl's night. So um, I'm just gonna, have a nice chilled one on my own actually. I'm not planning on going out and seeing anyone, uh, which is something that probably lots of you have also experienced over the past month or so, that socializing has been a lot more taxing uh, than I ever remember it being. And I think it's because I'm just not used to the level of stimulation, all of the travel, all of the sort of like mental, social uh, situations that you find yourself in. Like they're so much fun and I have absolutely loved getting back and seeing friends. We were actually at a wedding the other day and it was just so nice to see everybody again, catch up. Um, it just left us feeling on such a high, but it's also very tiring. And I'm sure that we will train ourselves back into that slightly faster paced lifestyle uh, that we were accustomed to. And we probably got a little bit comfortable uh, during lockdown, spending our time at home at a lot slower pace. So um, yeah, I think this evening I'm just gonna give myself a little break because it has been quite heavy loaded recently uh, with events and social events and so forth. So yeah, I'm sure many of you are feeling that way. I feel like the whole like anxiousness of getting back into socializing for me personally has passed now. That went pretty quickly after settling into a few social situations I was like oh no I'm okay I'm getting my rhythm back again which has been really nice so I'm gonna head off now um, Lydia's actually gonna pop out later and collect my dry cleaning which I thought I was gonna have to do th this morning so she saved me a little bit of time which is fantastic proper result so um, yeah I'm gonna uh, head out now to the golf probably get on the driving range before we tee off and enjoy this beautiful weather well we just arrived to Kirtlington golf course both Neil and my first time playing here. The first tee, the most terrifying moment for any golfer. Blewett's had a little bit of uh, practice on the range this morning, unlike myself. Got a little bit held up in traffic. Is it a par four? Five, par five to start off. Nice and long, pretty wide, but that rough doesn't look too attractive down the sides. What are you selecting? Three wood. Three wood. Come on then, let's see it. No pressure, mate. Oh, oh, he's in, he's in the rough. He's had a stinker. Not a great first tee shot. It's not, I'm glad I got it on film. It's a team to go. <laughs> We're all good. Show us how it's done. They're brave, aren't they? It's a lovely swing, that. I was trying to hit him. <laughs> go on, 10 points. You know what, I didn't actually see it. It went very it went right of the bunker. <laughs> Did it, it go in the rough? Like that. Did it go in the rough? Banana split. Did it go in the rough? I think so, yeah. <laughs> so promise to start by us too. Yeah. We've just wrapped up 
the first hole, par five. Both of us hit eight. That was absolutely woeful. Um, I was playing right down the rough on the right side and uh, Blue think... was playing from left to right. I don't think you should put this in. Uh, well, you've just got to be honest, you see. <laughs> you can't always play well. I mean, I never play well, but you can't always play well. That's so, fun. yeah. Look, the first one's always a practice. Healthy though. competition between the two of us is definitely on today. Normally, Blue, it smashes me, so. Practice so, yeah, hole. Enjoying the sunshine. It's yeah, beautiful. that's it, mate, yeah. Right, here we go then. <laughs> you didn't even touch the sand. That's OB, mate. Got to drop it again. Oh. Better get my buggy, it's going on its own little journey. I do love this buggy. It's been serving me very well, especially when it's really hot like today. You don't want to be lugging around a bag on your shoulders. This little fella does it for you. Sounded and looked very, very nice. Good? Embarrassing moment for Mr. Blue. He's actually having to take his shot from another tee. He's gone along. He's not going to be happy with that at all. I've left myself a lot of work. My ball is just over there. Hole there. And that's for par. We've just come onto a par three. This is Neil's tee shot. We're about there. Fantastic tee shot. This is a birdie opportunity. If he gets this in. This is my second shot for a par. Game's picking up a little bit now, isn't it, mate? Got in the rhythm. It's a tough putt though, mate. That was up a hill. Come on, finish her off a par. It is. Give yourself a little bit of work to do there. That's an Ali Gordon special, mate. Yeah, On for birdie, out for bogey. Second plan, mate, bottled it. <laughs> Blue for bar. Oh, stinking. I could win today at this rate. I could be in the money. Lovely. Yeah, it is. I believe it is. It is. <laughs> Game over. <laughs> You're going home. Little pea roller. I'm not sure about that. P for pea roller on the hat as well. Let's not get that scorecard out just yet, mate. Let's not get that scorecard out just yet. Okay. Four points in front of you that I've never been before. We've just finished up on the front nine and today's gameplay for me is pretty good. My shots aren't particularly attractive, but my score is looking possibly the best it's ever looked. So I've not actually counted them up yet, but I've been hitting a lot of bogeys, which is one over par, uh, which is the sort of area where I'm aiming to be at. So that's really great. Neil's not having the best of games. He's finding the rough a lot, but it means that it's slightly more competitive today because normally he schools me. So it might be my chance to get one back on him. The weather. Woo! This is a bit of a challenge, I'm not going to lie, it's hot walking around. I'm so pleased I've got my little uh, caddy helping me through, which is uh, proving it's worth. We're just about to kick off with the uh, back nine now, see what's going down. Yeah, we can get into the clubhouse, that'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah. Nice, very nice. Oh, you did the same. Go to the right, innit? Right. right as you can see back in the car just finished off at golf and I didn't end very well the last sort of five holes I reverted back to my old game I hit 48 across the front nine 
which would have meant I would have hit my target if I didn't hit a 10 and an 8 on the back nine, which was absolutely killer to my game. But that is golf, and I really did enjoy today. It was nice seeing Neil. I've also got hay fever, so I've taken an antihistamine. My eyes are really red. I've got a little bit of a, a runny nose, so hopefully that'll clear up in a second. But I've just got back in the car because we're going to be heading to Bista Clinic uh, to have this work done. And uh, fingers crossed all goes well because I don't actually know exactly what it is they're going to be doing. I found out that this was a possibility uh, to have it done through Lydia because she goes to Bista Clinic uh, to have some treatments done as well uh, with Dr. Ayad, as you would have seen on her channel. Um, he's the guy that did Lydia's nose. So fingers crossed all goes well and uh, it will be a nice quick in and out because I'm exhausted after walking around uh, 18 holes in this heat and I just want to get back and relax so yeah um, I've changed my top so I'm not as stinky put a little bit of deodorant on and uh, yeah let's hit the road and get this done We've just got out of the clinic and as you can see the redness is actually probably worse than it was before I went in and that is because it has just been lasered as you just saw. Um, so basically over the next few days the redness will go down. There is a chance it might scab. Um, I've just got to leave it alone, let it rest and recover and then perhaps in about four weeks I'll be going back for a second session of that laser um, just to completely remove it but so far so good. Unfortunately we weren't able to tackle the little white bit that's on my bottom eyelid uh, because it's too close to the eye so um, the last thing we want to do is cause damage to my eye itself so keeping it safe um, I've just been advised basically to rub the area which is something that I will do. Hopefully this works and that'll be a good job done. Nice and easy Easy, super quick, very happy boy. <laughs> you can stand. Look at you standing. We need to make it a little bit deeper, baby. He could some if he wanted to. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since I've picked up my camera and I've just been editing the video that was leading up to this point right now. I wanted to jump back on actually to just finish off talking about that treatment that I had at Bista Clinic with regards to having that red blemish lasered off of my face. And like I said, it's something that has been on my face now for about a year and a half, not sure what caused it. 
Um, I'm sure that, that many of you watching this will know exactly what caused that. It was something that was able to be removed using a laser treatment. So as you can see, it is 90% gone. So I'm really, really happy with the results of that one treatment. I was always advised to go back for a second treatment anyway, just to give it uh, another little blitz, just to completely remove it. But it looks fantastic. And although I think I was probably one of the only people that have used to notice it, I did it for me, not for anyone else. Um, so it was something that I'm really happy that I had done. And of course, it's the decision of the individual if they want something like that removing from their body. If any of you have got any little blemishes that annoy you a little bit, um, or you just wanna go and find out what they are, and if there's anything that can be done, should you want them to be done, uh, then I would suggest checking out Vista Clinic because they were super awesome. It was really fast and easy, and um, yeah. I've been left a very happy customer. So um, I just thought I'd give you a little update on that basically because that is kind of where I'd left off the video. But you may have noticed that I've got a nice little tan going on and that's because I've spent the last week or so in Ibiza with Lids and some friends, Josie and Charlie. It has just been the most incredible week. Like it's been so overdue. I know that so many of us haven't traveled in forever uh, because of COVID and everything that's been going on. and. I've not really wanted to travel, if I'm completely honest with you, because I didn't feel comfortable, and what's the point in traveling if you're not comfortable doing so? It was around about a month or so ago, they put Ibiza onto the green list. It was suggested that we booked a last minute holiday, basically, and that is exactly what we did. I think we have Charlie and Josie to thank for that, because if it was left to me and Lids, we probably wouldn't have gone ahead and booked it, because we're not that proactive uh, in booking holidays. I felt like, I was ready to travel again. Because I'm double vaxxed as well, I guess that that gave me a little bit more comfort. I'm well aware everybody has different opinions on the vaccination and that is completely your prerogative. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you what I think you should or shouldn't do. Um, I actually just think that you should do what you feel most comfortable doing and uh, just do as much research as you possibly can and uh, you can make that decision yourselves. But I'm personally double vaccinated and so maybe that gave me a little bit of confidence to go and travel again, I don't know. But I did and we went and it was incredible. And it wasn't too difficult either. Obviously, at the moment, there are uh, lots of regulations around traveling, depending on whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, depending on the uh, traffic light system. I don't know if that's what they call it, but the sort of like green, amber, and red list that they keep on playing around with. So we obviously did everything by the book and it wasn't too difficult at all. Uh, the only thing that we did do that was obviously just part and parcel of our decision making was we ended up having two tests in Ibiza because we were due to leave and we were just having so much fun and enjoying it so much we decided to extend our stay. So we had already had a test in Ibiza and then we had to go back a couple of days later and do the test again um, before we flew back. But that was our decision and it was a decision uh, that I do not regret. We actually ended up doing a boat day uh, on those extended days and it was so much fun. Like, they're not the cheapest of things to hire. And uh, we went a little bit bougie. We got a really, really nice yacht and we spent the day on it. And it was just so incredible. Um, I think that was one of the highlights of the holiday for me. Um, of course, you'd have probably seen in Josie and Lydia's videos that we went to Leo's, which Lyds and I did uh, a few years ago. And we just, it was just the two of us and we just had so much fun. Um, and it didn't disappoint. Of course, um, it was slightly different with uh, how the whole operation worked because of obviously social distancing and trying to keep things kind of like COVID uh, regulated. But the show was awesome and um, I wouldn't say uh, that it was a disappointment because of the regulations that were being put in place. Um, they've managed to make it as fun um, as I remember it. So that was brilliant. And then, yeah, we just did lots of sunbathing, eating amazing food. And uh, yeah, I just feel really good for it. So if anybody is traveling um, and they're a little bit nervous about it or they're really excited about it, um, I just hope you have an awesome experience because we were super lucky. We didn't do um, Ibiza in the typical Ibiza way, of course, um, where we were staying at Adzaro 
super isolated. We had lots of space. It almost felt like we had the resort to ourselves. We just kept away from a lot of the more busier areas and um, it was just, yeah, a lovely holiday. It felt like a much needed break. So yeah, um, if you wanna go and check out and see what we did, uh, and then of course, head over to the girls' videos. Uh, they'll be on their channels. And so yeah, that's where I've been uh, for the past week. But we're back home and so I've just been plowing through emails this morning, getting stuff organized and uh, I've got some really cool campaigns coming up that I need to get working on. And the garden has absolutely thrived since we've been away because we actually had quite a little bit of rain um, last week. So everything's just sort of like doing so well, which was a godsend for us because we were obviously like, we're not going to be there to water the garden um, and of course the kitchen garden. but. Mother Nature did that for us, so uh, yeah, we completely lucked out. But I'm just about to go and check on the bees. That's why I've come on here first, because I'm just about to put all my bee equipment on, and uh, sometimes it can get a little bit hot and a little bit sweaty out there, so I thought I'd sit down first whilst I'm nice and uh, comfortable and chat to you. But yeah, I just thought I'd give you a little bit of an update. I also thought that this would be a good opportunity to wrap up this video. I also forgot to mention actually, we've got Wentworth booked back in the diary and currently, although I'm sure the weather will almost most definitely change uh, by the time we get to that date, it is booked and uh, the weather is currently looking good for that date. So uh, we're all looking forward to that. Um, me, my dad, my brother, and my manager, um, because it's gonna be an amazing day out. So that is coming soon. And um, yeah, there is some other cool things coming up as well, uh, which I'll leave for another video. But I hope you're all having a great week and uh, thank you for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Peace.